Number one, what inspired the book? What inspired the book? Hold on, let me, shameless plug. Critical Faith Theory. I read wow. it cover to cover, true statement, on a vacation with my family. Um, we went by the pool and I just sat there and I, I did not put it down. And I'm being very honest, you can ask anybody in my home. It's the first time I read a whole book in three days. And it was just, I just wanted to read the next page. I wanted to understand your thoughts and your reasonings. Um, so first and foremost, before we jump into the content, just want to say, man, shout out to you, bro. Uh, it was, it was really well written, man, uh, a former, just, just massive giant in the faith in my life is a guy named B.O. Kelly. And he says, whatever you do, always make sure that you're communicating in such a way that anybody in the room can understand it. And you take these very heavy really weighty thoughts and controversial to some topics and you make it so easy that my daughter could understand the heart wow. and the message and that is uh bro that's a kudos to you because you spent some time um in the workshop making sure that everybody who got their hands on the book could understand it and um i i just want to let you know man that it, I, it, it shines through the whole book like wow. you can literally tell you wanted people to get where you're coming from and uh well done on that so oh man thank you real talk bro thank you man um and this is so crazy um writing that whole book everything you just said man i'm just so weird i wrote it on this yeah. <laughs> i showed my screensaver <laughs> i showed my screensaver but what inspired the book pj was you and I had had a lot of these conversations offline. We've had a lot of conversations on culture, uh, community, race issues, police brutality, um, po politics. How does the? It was so many things. So I was going literally. I make a joke and say I'm from the barbecues to the bar mitzvahs, but it was my reality. I would leave having dinner at a multi million dollar home and then go have a conversation in the hood. So it was just like, oh man, like I, I got one person, like I'm trying to get it. And this person over here never had a financial uh, struggle in their life. So it wasn't that I went and said, this person is privileged. This person is oppressed. It was like, man, they see the world different and their circumstances has led to their worldview. And so many people would call me, so many pastors, so many CEOs of companies, nonprofits was like, the world is on fire, Q, what do I do? And I would have conversations mm. with them. And I was just like, man, I want to, I want to, I want to put all my thoughts and my point of view and my worldview on paper because I wanted people to have a resource because I believe this and I'm going to say this. I believe when 2020 hit, we were, the world was reactive. Mm. I believe when the world was, the nation was set on fire and division crept in, we were all reactive. That's why we went around spraying streets. We start putting up signs. That's showing me that you are saying, oh, we missed it before. Now let us get it. But if you were living out diversity and we were living with a biblical worldview, we would have had nothing to respond to except that an individual done something, an individual faced a consequence. Yeah. Yeah. But what we did was we charged the nation. We charged everybody. If you if you believe this way, you're you, you with us. If you believe that way, we're charging you to. If, if your organization don't stand over here, we're charging you. So it was just like we were so reactive to this. Mm -hmm. I wanted to create a resource to where we'll never yeah. be that again, if that makes sense. No, absolutely. And I think that you, you, you did that. You gave a playbook for some different perspectives. Um, and I think that... I, I think that you you tackled some really heavy co like concepts and um, like even like when I was reading it, I was like feeling like some ignorance of my own was being shed and awareness was happening because you're kind of seeing like the other side of the coin because if you don't understand, you don't understand. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not that yeah. you you're trying to be ignorant so you just don't know, you know? Yeah. And so being able to see a different perspective uh, was extremely 
encouraging. And I, I would say to you that I think that your uh, thesis statement is that living through a biblical worldview rather than a economic, political, yeah. race, yeah. you know, it, 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 it's helped me understand that it, <laughs> it doesn't necessarily matter where you're from or what's going on or the color of your skin. This book trumps all. Yeah. This, you know, the Bible, yeah. not just his book, but the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I and I really appreciate that because it, you're not pointing to theory; you're pointing to truth. Amen. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, next question: Have you have you have you found any fallout since the book? Is there, yeah, has there been any like disagreement with some of the? Because yeah. you, I mean, you drew the line in the sand on a yeah. lot of heavy stuff but i was yeah. like my man got back boom i had um uh, yeah well you know um praise the lord i guess that before i got saved i was good at fighting so yeah I <laughs> catch these man. hands like you these, these hands do two things i, I pray and lay whatever yeah. you want to do you know what i mean like i, I throw i can throw I hands take the, pray for the first yeah the first so a uh, guy i want you to look at this uh cover Someone hit me and said, this cover looks very ultra Republican right wing and it looks very divisive and it looks very oh. mad. And I was like, the cover? And so that was the feedback. And it was like, you're, you're, um, you're leaning right. And I was like, have you read it? And they said, no. And I was like, gotta go, you know, I'm busy. Yeah. No, he <laughs> definitely judged a book by its cover. No pun intended. Yes, exactly. You know, so I literally was told that. But as far as that, all the feedback has been great because yeah. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this is two things in this book. I'm giving you this is autobiography slash ministry manual. Every story in here of my life, my it's my I saw that. Yeah, it's you can't take away what I saw. And then you can't take away what after massive research, my conclusion. That's why it says developing a worldview, because I'm trying to make sure when I see Pastor Josh, I see him, his life, his actions mm. through the lens of scripture. Yeah. So that's why it's like not develop the worldview. No, guys, I'm with y'all. I am developing because this time where let's just go here. Um, I see a cop pull over a guy media had told me because I have a tan, I supposed to be with this person and you're supposed to be with that person. The Bible tells me a man hears the whole matter before he makes an opinion. So, mm. so I have got, I have got feedback out of, but no one, I will say this, if you have had negative or fallouts, call me, let's discuss and give me your point of view, but make sure it's valid. Mm -hmm make sure you got historical facts and documents because one thing about us pastor josh we have known each other for years we verbally spar all the time so all the time. <laughs> if you have a discretion if you think i did something wrong call me and, yeah. and, and like yo yo you did this this wasn't true and if you get me i'll humbly say i was wrong yeah well you know i first off i i think it's weird when we try to read something to find its errors um, yeah. rather than to read it, to understand the story. Yeah. And um, I, you did a really good job telling the story. Um, hmm. Church question. Church question. Come on. Cause there's some chapters. If you haven't got the book yet, get the book because every chapter has a, has an audience. Yeah, it has a person in mind. It has a group in mind. It has a situation in mind, and so every chapter um, gives us a new opportunity to to have a critical faith theory in these realms, and mm -hmm. um, it was very congruent with that. But um, so diversity in the church. Yep. Okay. Now. For me to build a multicultural church, mm. do I do I have to have those people in the church working at the front doors on stage to present? We're a multicultural church. 
is that genuine or is that an agenda or like where do you because you get into that a little bit yeah i i get into that and and and, and i'm gonna get into it without giving it away because you gotta go get the book um but <laughs> uh what one thing i will say i am okay with walking in a church and everybody looks like josh galvin it, it because Overweight, we're not white male with gray hair <laughs> yes he said that i didn't and i said That's the yes, ugliest church you ever walked into bro listen i am okay i had a guy call me one time like pastor because I, I consult for some pastors i help them out they're like man i'm trying to be diverse my heart is want to come in here and see the kingdom every shade every color i was like no problem like can you help us can you meet with us i was like i would love to man where are you at he's like i'm in idaho Hey, bro, I, I don't think it's a lot of brothers out there. Like, oh, bro, like, I, I don't think, a lot of potatoes, a lot of potatoes, listen, bro. I don't think you're lacking diversity because you don't you hate people or you don't love people. I think your your zip code and your geographical situation makes that up. So mm. if you so I want to I tell people that if your church is one way, that's not just evident that you're this racist and don't care about people. You're in it. my man, Pastor Chase Holson. Back, I mean, I, I'm not pulling up in Idaho, and all of us, I know this don't sound good. All of us are not called to lead diverse congregations, mm. and I talk about that in the book. Like, I, I'm gonna give this out the book. It's okay to make a good, inclusive post on MLK Day, it is hard to go to that pulpit after a race riot has taken place. So this is the thing where I tell people with me, I am, I, I have a tan uh, and my wife is a light skin. If my, if the, if the Lord sends us in, it's a multi it's all Caucasians. That's who the Lord has called me to. When you try to build diversity, when you try to build diversity, we roll into tokenism. I don't want the African American at the door because you want to make me think you're hit. The person can look like me, but if she's rude, get someone else to greet me. <laughs> and, 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 and because if, if you are being graded by who's like by who's at the door and who's this and that, if you try to build diversity by, by what you read by a podcast, it is generic, it's 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 not authentic, and it will show. It will show we cannot get into the put this person on staff because it checks off the box. You have to organically say, hey, this is our church and we're going to love people. And I'm an African-American male. We do. Representation is key. When you see people that look like you, you have a sense of, OK. But at the end of the day, when you know the pastor's heart and that person is qualified for where you're going to put them to, that's kingdom. I don't care yeah. if you bring me to be your worship pastor, you're trash. Like, because I can't sing. <laughs> you're I can't trash. sing. You're trash. Like, and I'm gonna say no, you're trying to build diversity because if our nation ever go up in flames again, you wanna say, well, look. So, but mm. the thing is, no, bro, you're good at this, you suck. You got a facial radio. <laughs> you're, like, cool. <laughs> you're cool. And that's just what it is. You got some people online greeting people in the morning and they have a facial radio. Yeah. It's like, no, bro, he should be behind the scenes. So the thing is with me, I don't think he's worth it. For radio. <laughs> right. So, I shouldn't have said that part. See, we get too comfortable. I think we're, you should have the best people because at the end of the day, if you are judging my heart by the people that lead worship, you don't know me and this isn't the place for you. Mm. That's it. Yeah. If you, if you haven't had time. You haven't without to eat. You haven't served. Because if the greeter offends you, then the truth is going to cut you up. Mm. And, and so, so that's the whole thing, too. And if the greeter offends you, you are walking in looking yeah. for problems. Well, and, and you know, so something that I talking about tokenism, and especially in the Western culture, um, I, I think that it, it, we have to be so careful not to cross into consumerism and bring that into the church, yeah. right? Because what we do is we try to we try to bring what sells or what brings in people 
rather than the purity of just who Jesus is. Yeah. Because that's the thing that I'm, I, I think that, man, um, ha- we have to have the conversation is, is Jesus and the Lord draws all men to himself. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter the color of your skin when Jesus is Lord, right? Mm-hmm. It's like we're, we're part of the family. We're brothers and mm-hmm. sisters again, mm-hmm. right? Like you have a different tan than me. Yeah. But we're brothers. Yeah. And it's not, it's not our politics or our perspective or our, our status or our, uh, where we live. It, it's him. And I think that that's the thing that we have to maybe endorse more is if we all see him, if we <clears throat> behold Jesus, yeah. if we come to the church for Jesus, yeah. he is the heart of it all. I think we find a whole lot more grace in these areas because it's not necessarily where do I fit in because I don't see someone like me. It's, man, I see him and I know his word and I know who he's called me to be. And these are my brothers and sisters. We are family. And I think that, man when we allow ourselves because it's real, like we want to, we want to do anything we can to win the loss. And I mean, I applaud that. But what happens is, is that if it's anything but Jesus, it doesn't last. Yeah. And I think when it goes back to diversity, for those who's watching live and comment, shout out to y'all subscribe, Quantel Lindy on all platforms. Um, but for those who are like, how do I diverse, diverse? See, I've walked in churches where, I was the only person in there that looked like me. And I had one of the grandest times because I felt called there. I have also walked and served the places where my wife was the only one that looked like her. So we don't really go in places looking, so to speak, for comfort as much as we look for calling. And we've been in diverse places and we've been in places and we say, Lord, have you called us here? And I think that's one thing about us. Like we all want to... We want to be diverse, and I know this is going to get me, um, this is going to, I'm going to get flagged for this one, but I'm going to say it, then you can go to your next question. Diversity is not exclusively the job of people that look like Pastor Josh. Let that just sit right there. We, I see brothers talking about diversity, and I'm like, bro, I've been to your church. Diversity cannot only be something we, we it can't be something we harp on mm. when the pastor is light skinned. Mm. That's one thing I like 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 and I love my Hispanic people, but if Hispanics are a hundred percent Hispanic, we call it Hispanic church. Mm. And, and if this is African American church, but our but our other brothers, they gotta you you gotta diverse up. Mm. And I, and I talk about that in the book, and I go in depth. So before you cancel me, get the book <laughs> and let me finish get my the, Let him speak for himself. Yeah, at quantalizing.com. Uh, so that's one thing, yeah. too. We have, made, we have made diversity your job. Yeah. That's a that's, uh, wow. Man. Man. Um, last question. LeBron or Michael Jordan? Who's the GOAT? Oh, man. Come on, man. Um, 6-0. and oh, Michael Jordan is one. LeBron is two. And um, LeBron got to get a – it's Jordan all day. It's Jordan all day. It's Jordan. Like, I got to relax. I'm not even about to go out like that. And I'm a LeBron fan. You know what I'm saying? But you got to realize, Jordan has never seen a game six. He don't even know what it looks like. True. And he's undefeated. And, I mean – you know, it's Jordan, man. It's Jordan. Jordan revolutionized the game. And, uh, yeah, Question, Jordan. All if Jordan's in his prime in this era, does he still last? In this era? Bro, in they, this don't era. The bad, they don't got the bad boy pitches in Detroit. Your wife can talk about that. Jordan will have nine rings in this era. <laughs> like, you got to realize something, man. They were fun. In this era where if you breathe on them, they get a foul? Jordan will have ten rings. You know, what I'm saying? and then the thing is too, though. Like at the Jordan was different, man, and Jordan was different. Um, it's Jordan. Jordan is the greatest of all time, and LeBron coming in at, at number two. And you know, you got to give it up to the Mamba. 
And then you got to shout out to Magic Johnson, the best point guard ever. Got to give it up to Larry Bird was a bad boy. Larry Bird was a bad boy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But but it's Jordan. And I don't even rock Jordans no more. I just kind of – I always feel like um played when me and my kids got the same shoes on. I just think I need to grow up. So <laughs> I try to don't rock the Why am I like either. hiding my shoes under my feet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like if me and my daughter come out and we both got dunks on, I'm like, do I need to grow up or, or you need to calm down? You know so what my, I mean? my Crocs is not okay. No, because I, I'm pretty sure Raylan got some. <laughs> Hers are pink, mine are gray. It's very true. Yeah. No, I'm just playing, man. Jordans was something that what I think is – I grew up on them. My dad, shout out to him. He made sure I had every pair. I just feel weird going to buy a shoe now that I bought in 97. <laughs> you like, I already had that. <laughs> I'm like, yo, that's a great marketing scheme. I can't buy, I can't go buy the, um, some people call it a Nokia. We call it a Nokia. I can't go buy that phone now. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So, yeah, but man, I, it's it's a super fun man. I, I don't even I know appreciate what we, it, man. Yeah, man, I wanted people to. Um, we've been uh, saying we're gonna do a podcast together for years, and I'm yeah. gonna bring y'all into a private conversation, and we're gonna get off here. My brother right here from another mother, he calls me every time he's out of the country, in the airport, <laughs> and say, "When we gonna start the podcast?" <laughs> and I say. <laughs> And I say, man, listen, as soon as you get back to the States, we're going to start. He goes back. We talk. He get back to the States. He goes back to a different country and calls and says, man, when are we going to start the party? <laughs> uh, you Yo, know, stop, stop me when I'm lying, PJ. There's no, where's the lie? There's no lie. I think it's the flight gives me time to think about the things I wanted to do that I didn't do. You know what I'm oh, saying? He, he calls me from Africa like, yo, what's up? Hey, man, we need to start this podcast. I'm like, bet, man. As soon as, like, as soon as you get back from Africa, we there. He's like, bet. He called me. Then you go to, like, Taiwan. Or, what, what, what place? It doesn't even matter, bro. Was... Trust me. My man passport game is up. He calls me from a different country. Again. He's like, yo, the podcast. I didn't say anything. The third time he was out the country, he called. He's like, man, the podcast. I said, listen, man. Every time you're in a different part of the world, you call me to do the podcast. And I told him, he said, I don't know why I do that. I said, because when you're out of state relaxing, you think about the stuff you want to do. Yeah. When you come back home, the responsibility of Relaxing father, is a very loose word. Relaxing true, is true. a very loose word. Yeah, he's like, cute. I went and built a church. <laughs> I went and built a church. Very, <laughs> it's very loose. Oh, yeah. I forgot um, he went and built a well, guys. He's making I, sure I, people I, I did water. I didn't build it. They, they did. The Lord did. Hey, and for the people that the wonder why I didn't go to Africa, because Josh told me his experience and it was amazing and I packed all my bags and he left me and he didn't remind me. So blame Pastor Josh while I wasn't on the next trip to Africa. Go get the book, quantellindsay.com. First off, series. you can't end this with that because you're always going to like angle it to make it look like I'm responsible for you and your calendar. <laughs> like, like, again, if you're so grown, you're not going to wear the same shoes as your daughter. You <laughs> I'm kidding. We do, man. We do have to take a trip together because I think it would be uh, fun. Just, uh, man, mission work is so much fun. And you can do local missions and global missions. and But just being in the hands and feet of Jesus, it just it builds, it makes your bond stronger. I feel like every time I go on a trip with somebody, no matter if it's a state over, a couple miles over, or across the, you know, the, the big pond, it's, it, you always come back closer because you're you're in a journey together and so well i would love to do that with you bro hey man dope i love you my brother man this guy is an amazing guy we we, we chop it on the phone about everything and i truly believe i'm going to do what i did today i'm gonna to take the initiative reach out and just go so right now this man has so much knowledge for youth pastors young adult pastors senior pastors and i want him to go through his 16 17 year journey and i'm gonna to want to jump on here and I truly believe every senior pastor, not all joking aside, I know I'm the guy like quantolizzi.com being that guy, but I truly Damn believe. Wow over here, bro. <laughs> but listen, I truly <laughs> believe if you want to minister to people and you lead people, you're a leadership at a nonprofit, you lead a Fortune 500, you lead a ministry, you lead a church, and you want to be 
proactive and not mm. reactive. This is a resource for you. I wrote this book so we will never be chasing behind our tails trying to prove that we're not racist, that we do love other people. And that's what happened. I want this is a playbook to rob the enemy and stop the enemy from dividing us. Mm -hmm. You go, some of y'all are not going to like me after you get done with this book. I know I've made my peace with that. But some of you are going to disagree with some points. That's cool. This is the first of a couple more, but I truly believe senior pastors, I wrote this with you in mind. African-American men and women, I wrote this with you in mind. Caucasian brothers and sisters, I wrote that with you in mind. Get this, Hispanic, Asian, and all nationalities. If you want to understand people and learn how to develop a biblical worldview, I believe this book will be a resource for you. And I'm so grateful, bro, that this was the first book that Josh picked up and didn't put down until it was over. Very true. Very true statement. Go, true statement. man. Love you, bro. Go love on your family. Can't love you, man. Again. Homework time, bro. They keep coming out like, are we ready to do this? I'm like, oh, yeah. man. So, love, love you, you guys. Bless. Thanks for having me, bro. Good deal. Peace. Peace.